Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today. It's time for Garden Questions and Answers. You got one? Send it all over to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. It doesn't have to be during the show. You can send it over any time as well as give us a call 24-7-365 at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-7469. This question, Holly, is sponsored by Fleet Farm and FleetFarm.com. I know a yellow cucumber is overripe and bitter. Can I leave it on the vine and save seeds from it? Yes and no. If you, uh, you, you can stay on the vine, if you're going to try to save seeds, stay on the vine as long as possible, almost to the point where it's falling off the vine. And then you can save it. You uh, go ahead and, and rinse the seeds off through a, a sieve and you let them dry and label them. Now, here's the no aspect of that. If you are growing additional varieties of cucumbers in your garden or you know neighbors who are growing cucumbers and you're in a very prolific gardening community or a uh, uh, what the community garden or a allotment or whatever the case is then no because cucumbers easily cross pollinate and a cucumber can cross pollinate or be pollinated uh, across varieties up to a half mile away. Now, this is no guarantee saying that if uh, you've got cucumbers and you're four houses down from you have cucumbers that you're going to get and they've got lemon cucumbers and you've got pickling that you're going to get some kind of morphation. Uh, and if you save the seeds and you grow them next year, that's this weird cucumber is going to develop. It doesn't mean that. But the, uh, pro- uh, the, uh, hypo- the uh, probability that uh, you'll have some cross in that there is some likelihood to that. So it just is better if you um, go buy fresh seeds from JunkSeed.com. Use coupon code 10TG23 to save 10% on your orders at Jung, J-U-N-G-S-E-E-D.com. And uh, get they've got a, several, there are a handful of varieties there, just so you're guaranteed to know that what you're planting is what you're going to get. All right, Holly. So the next question is, is I bought some pots to plant herbs in, but they don't have holes in the bottom. Do I need to somehow poke or or drill holes in them, or is there a different solution? Yes. Uh, any item in which you are going to plant in any type of container, drainage has to be achieved. Otherwise, you're going to have a dead plant. Soil, roots, all of that needs oxygen. And if you completely muck it up with water that can't drain, you've turned into a bog and a soggy mess and everything's going to die. So if it's plastic, it's easy to either drill holes in it or safely get some type of nail heated up over a form of heat and melt holes into it. If it is ceramic, uh, you're going to need a masonry drill bit because if you just try to hammer holes or drill holes in it, there's a, a, a pretty good chance you're going to crack the pot and you're, you've ruined the pot in which you've got uh, for this application. Uh, anything else like grow bags are naturally porous. You don't have to worry about that, but you do need drainage. Uh, five gallon bucket, same thing. If you are, uh, you want to be sure you have ample drainage. So, you know, you get some of these pots have one hole in the center. If you can achieve three or four to allow adequate drainage, because it's always easy to add water, but if water is pooling up in the bottom of a pot, it's going to create a musty, muggy, sloppy, choke out oxygen to the root system and can actually damage the plant's root development as well because it can't grow into the water. We're not we're not uh, doing lake plants here or anything like that. <laughs> so yeah, any type of drainage you need, any type of pot you need drainage, and however you can achieve that safely, that's what you need to do. Fantastic. So then the next question that we got in was, I harvested some ripe garden tomatoes, but I have to leave town for a few days. Can I put them in the fridge while I'm gone so they don't get too ripe? You don't want to put tomatoes in the fridge. Uh, it changes the, min, min, uh, the the sugars inside of the tomato, doesn't it? You will once they're ripe. It doesn't make a huge change. And just a cold tomato doesn't not appetizing to me. Well, you could put them in the fridge and then take them out before you're going to serve them. True, but a, a ripe in, in order to ripen tomatoes, tomatoes can be harvested. But this is this is a ripe tomato. It's already ripe. Yes. 
Um, I guess I, I I say put them in the fridge. Well, yeah, it's going to slow down. It's like bread. You put bread in the fridge on yeah. a warm day to keep it from potentially molding. Right. Um, you could put it in the fridge. Yes. However, um, it, you don't want to do it for prolonged, like weeks and weeks and weeks, because it will go bad on you. Uh, but a couple of days, you would be okay. Um, just make a BLT before you go and use the tomato up, and or take it with you. Take it with you. Take it with you. Give them to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you love them or not. Get, get people, rid of it. People like tomatoes. And yes. And they get excited well, for pe- garden tomatoes. Right. Those whom have consumed a garden tomato before. If you've only had the cardboard grocery store tomatoes, uh, you don't, or the, you know, the, the, the fast food restaurant tomatoes that are slightly green and you gnaw through, it, there's no comparison to a homegrown tomato. No, I know... Um my friend and I were on a trip recently and we went out somewhere and they put a tomato as a garnish and it was the saddest looking tomato. It was not, seen. yeah. It, it was like, we got to get yellow, rid of this. So it's put on the side of the plate. Yeah. Green in the inside. Not, and not like green tomato green. It was like sad, sad tomato green. Yeah. So I, I say put them in, if they're ripe, you can put them in the fridge for a few days. It's not a big deal. Like Joy said, I wouldn't leave them in there, you know, for a long time. The other thing you can do if you've got a lot of tomatoes and, you know, you don't want to can them or you can't can them or you've canned all you want, start dehydrating tomatoes. Sun, I mean, they're considered sun-dried tomatoes, but put them in the dehydrator and we've got still bags of tomatoes from years ago that are still just perfectly fine. And you can use them in multiple applications. If you're making noodles, you throw a handful of them in and they will add, you know, they'll kind of rehydrate uh, lasagna, whatever, whatever you're doing, you can add the dehydrated tomatoes and you can also eat them as well but it just adds a unique fresh flavor even though they've been dehydrated but that's a good way to get rid of a lot of tomatoes and that's what we're going to end up doing with some of our tomatoes because we're getting quite a few is just dehydrate them and utilize them for other applications right so then the the next question is or yeah i grew garlic for the first time i've cured it I've read different things about how to store it, but what what is would you say is the best way? Well, if you cured it properly, the tops are dead, the the green growth is dead, and the roots have dried, and you can re- you can cut them off. Uh, the the stalk you can cut the stalk off, and you can trim the roots, and you simply put them in a cl- uh, out of direct sunlight in a cool, dry place, and they will keep for six to eight, maybe nine months. Now we've got some garlic that's well over a year. And it's starting to go soft, and if you let it too long, it will just completely dehydrate and dry up to nothing, and you squeeze the uh, bulb, and it's just like paper mache in your hands. But if you can get it in a cool, dry place and know that you've got a lot of it, you can dehydrate it, you can roast it, you can do fill in the blank with it, mince it utilize it as quickly as possible as it's getting later on into the um, storage time frame. It makes great gifts. People are not aware of how good homegrown garlic is and how fragrant it is. Not so much spicy, but just the the aroma, the intensity that a piece of garlic can have. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.